listen, I ain't wearing no t- no crop top to wear. And uh, I still I still like I'm I'm grown. I'm too old. I know. Low rises and crop tops. Like I put on <laughs> some highway something and, and a crop top. top me too. Yeah. You are not about to hit me no with no hip jeans. Yeah, no man. With you know, a crop top. Not Aaliyah. I'm almost forty years old. No. Right. No. I heard somebody say today, like the older you get, the more conservative you um you dress. And I'm like, that is true because it is. I mean, I still kind of just push a little the envelope sometimes. I'm a little short. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I'm like, my long legs is one of my best assets. So why wouldn't I show them, them off? off? And I don't have long legs, but I still show them off. Show them off. You have cute legs though. You know what I'm saying? Very, I'm they're very like like thin but and they because they are thin like that they look very long okay, on your little on, you. your little, on my time. little stature <laughs> you ready i'm ready girl let's go Dope girls, yeah, it's a podcast. Two dope girls, yeah, we speaking all facts. Two dope girls, yeah, we got it, just relax. Two dope girls, hit like, subscribe back. Two dope girls, and we own it, never slack. Two dope girls, and we got each other back. Two dope girls, and we coming for the cash. Two, two dope girls, and we all about a bag. Dope, the dope girls. All right. Hey, oh my girl. God. How I have missed you and two dope girls. Oh, oh an air hug, virtual air hug. I missed you too. Oh, <laughs> I know. I'm going to try to get vaccinated. I was supposed to go get vaccinated Thursday, but something came up. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, to... you know, you'll get back in line with the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Other than that, how was your week? um it was girl i missed you the people missed you they missed us I, shit i missed us <laughs> i know i did too i sent you a video like hey, I miss you, girl. <laughs> yes like um i had a i had a great week and it was long and it was not spring breaky but um i endured some really great weather while y'all were enduring some horrible weather terrible you said it's not um spring first of all i didn't even know it was spring break this is how far removed i am for from being a spring breaker so wait warren didn't do anything for spring break uh work oh yeah he's waiting until he gets his well we'll discuss that Mm when i discuss my week but okay yeah so i did nothing um nothing special this week uh yeah just enjoyed um some some quiet time yeah some relaxing r and r r and r that's it how about yours um mine was good work we celebrated mastaki's birthday last weekend we went to top golf i know (laughs) i was thinking i was like madonna probably was like I, I know it was so much fun we were all wore our dummy sweaters in I honor saw. of him so that was good uh warren and i went to go take our second vac- vaccination yesterday mm-hmm. and you asked why he didn't go on spring break is because he wanted to have his second vaccination and wait for the two weeks to be up because he already he sent me a text this morning and what did he send me? He said something about, um, oh, F it, no mask off, and sent me a future meme. I said, you know what? Leave me alone. Just leave I am me alone. so weak. Ah, you so got little kids, man. You got little kids. I know. But that was other. And I mean, that was all that I did. And work, work. I didn't work out this week. I worked out one day this week. It just wasn't happening for me. This it was week. spring break. Who works out on spring break? Ugh. Girl, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get this body yaddy 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 for summer. You know, you said it's gonna be a hot white summer. So I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get prepared. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's going to be a hot wife summer. If you're a yeah. wife. Make it hot, sis. That, that's, let's let's define hot wife summer. Okay, okay so we're not in these streets hoeing. No, that does not mean hot girl summer because clearly right. hot girl summer means to just do you and don't give a fuck, right? right. No, no, right. that's not hot girl summer. We are in hot right. wife summer. We are respectable yes. wives that are fine as hell. As okay. Hell. And y'all body, body, body. 
Right. Body, body, bodies are put together. Yes. Make sure you take care of them babies before you get out the house, though. That's the part. You understand? Make sure your babysitter is paid. Make sure, you know, that's all we're saying. We just saying we're going to have fun and we're going to be respectful. And, you know, we might bring our men along every now and again. Y'all stop hating. (laughs) Maybe once or twice. You know, they say don't bring sense. You know. (laughs) because <laughs> we are wise so they gotta come along every now and again they do because we you know we're gonna feel butt hurt if we don't come along with them we do not take too many trips or too many outings without your wife right. no right. and then they, and then they're gonna be hollering hot hot husband some of them will be like oh no man, no <laughs> no this does not apply to you sir right <laughs> get your ass down somewhere <laughs> somebody got to be out working so they can pay the babysitter okay that's why i said go to work (laughs) exactly that's so funny that was my week and i did miss you i was like dang what am i gonna do with with my fridays now i don't know but we're back on it yes back ready hey you ready to do this little game we got girl i guess with my water i know i'm so sick of you it's not a drinking game anyway that's all right i'm gonna I'm going to be back in full effect <laughs> soon. Soon come. <laughs> All right. So this game is Have You Ever? So we're just going to ask each other just random questions. Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? And I'll start off. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be a little mild. So have you ever been on television? Yes. Have you? Mm-hmm. When? I was a model back in the day. So... I was on the news. Okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been on television for something else. I can't remember. I was I on know, the news but... when I was younger and it was with really? my high school, but it was like, they were doing a coats for kids drive oh, and really? they were just like, Hey, do you want to be in it? And I was like, okay. So I'm just standing in front of the school with everybody else. We had to have our coats on because they were just trying to solicit the public to donate coats for kids in need during the um, winter time. So I did that. And that was like so long ago. Oh, girl, I was like mine was too. eighth grade, ninth grade. Yeah, mine was too. I think I was in high school, but I just modeled some clothes for, I think, a, I think she was a designer or something. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't even remember, but I just remember um, modeling the clothes with another young lady. So yeah, it was okay, my first little modeling okay. gig first of many <laughs> there you go <laughs> what you got for me okay let's see wait is the game never have i ever no or... it's have you ever <laughs> actually have i ever done something okay have you ever been kicked out of an establishment uh... any establishment hell yeah because you not already told us a story what I told you? Why well, I got kicked out of? Let me know, cause you know I. You get kicked out when you were drunk. Oh, the strip club. You got That's kicked out, club. boo. Or yeah, it was a bar just... or something. No, or maybe you I got carried out. I got carried out. I didn't get kicked out. I know when me and Scoot, um, when he proposed to me and we went to the strip club, we didn't get kicked out. But the girl was like, "Get your wife," cause I guess I, I mean, get your girl, cause I was like smacking her ass too hard or whatever. Oh wow! So I mean. That so what you're saying is we got to make a trip to the strip club. Yeah, you, you I was just, you know, I wasn't a drinker back then. I told you I never drank a lot when I was younger in my 20s. So that night it was a cause for a celebration. So I had way too much to drink and I could have potentially got us kicked out. The you had one too many drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. So, I mean, but I don't plan on getting kicked out of anybody's establishment. Right. I'm too, I'm too Unless retired. I need to. Mm, yeah unless i need to unless we talk about some some unjust things going on i could be kicked right. out or if she uh, if she or or he wants to rise up and get froggy i'ma jump gotta pull out my old my old tricks from the bag gotta mm-hmm. put that in retirement shoot right okay so have you ever popped up on someone unannounced absolutely <laughs> Do we want to give the scenario? <laughs> I've done it plenty of times. I do it on Sean. Two minute account. <laughs> do you really? I sure will. Uh, well, we'll continue. I've done it in high school, and I've, I've done it in college. I'm a popper upper. Okay. You know what? I'm not a popper upper. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not. I'll let my instinct. Well, if my instincts tell me to pop up, yeah. then I'm gonna pop up. Yo, inst- my instincts was telling me. It was oh, telling okay. Me. Well, then you should have. Yep. Pop, mm-hmm. pop, pop. Yep. Still gonna pop. What you got for me? Let's see. Um, have you ever gotten a tattoo that you regret? Yes. Where? Oops, sorry, I don't hit Nola. She right on the man. I didn't even know it. Nah, this is the get. first tattoo I got really uh you know that's my first tattoo too on my shoulder it's a naked fairy and it's ugly and I was 18 and I was like I'm going to get a tattoo because I'm 18 years old and nobody can't tell me what to do I regret it it was like in a little strip mall tattoo parlor everybody in the hood got their tattoos there so I was like let me go get my tattoo and then right I regret it yeah I have a um a Japanese, a- we're just gonna call it Asian. Hell, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna say I don't know it's Japanese, Chinese. I don't know. Yeah, but it's a um a sign on my back, and it means beauty or you beautiful. Sure? <laughs> so when I first got it, people was like, "How you know? How do you know?" So uh-huh. I went to a um this little place called Egg Roll Express. Like back in the hood, we all used to go to Egg Roll Express. Don't go there now because I heard they used to kill cats and dogs. No, we're not doing that. Listen, <laughs> we're not okay, doing that, that was just back in the day. I don't know. Okay, but I went there and I asked them what um what does this mean? That's what they said. They said it means beautiful. Okay. Well, okay. So at least the tattoo artist did right by you. Did right by me, but it's my favorite one. Now well, the one what? that I regret. Is the tattoo artist Asian? No. So I wonder how they knew. I guess just because the way we know this means what they mean. <laughs> fuck you. I don't mean fuck you or something. Sound like language. Mean, thank you. This or... <laughs> no, um, this means fuck you. That yeah, means fuck thank you. you. <laughs> Same way we know that in sign language and we don't know sign language for real and we're not deaf. <laughs> I don't know. But the one that I hate or regret is on my stomach. It was mm-hmm. the worst decision of my life. Yeah. yeah. I went to Wallace State. Uh, <laughs> and if you know anything about Wallace State, you know, it was the most boring town in the world. So one day I was just bored in Huntsville, Huntsville, Alabama, oh. country and races, right? Okay. Say say less. <laughs> say less. Right. So I went to this um tattoo place that was super country, and I asked for this little cute little sun around my belly button. Girl, when I got up, he <laughs> gave me he he gave me what looked like the sun to an ant. Okay, like the sun was huge. It was like all over my belly. It was sure. it's so big that when I wear like high waist pants, you can still see part of the sun coming out the high waist pants. Like you your belly like, button this big, but it's supposed to be this. Big. <laughs> it's supposed to be like right around my belly button. Worst thing to ever. Give you an eclipse, not the sun. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. I'm going to get it taken care of very soon, though. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I don't know about this. I think I want to get it either removed or covered if i want to get it covered it has to be like a really big piece that goes all the way down to my other tattoos and kind of yeah. like connects them but mm-hmm. that's gonna be some bands on bands on bands so we'll bands. see right right okay so have you ever been skinny dipping yes with my friends girlfriends yeah okay that sounds yeah. fun i've never been skinny dipping yeah. with my girlfriends super fun yep Oh, I'm gonna have to try that next AK. Yep. Well, you gotta have like one of those room, kind of private, you know, rooms that just or not or not. You know, <laughs> you can go to the pool summer, time. but to me, my hot wife summer does not include that. <laughs> my <laughs> private because my husband will be like, eh, eh. So I'm just gonna it keep mine private. It could be late night private. Late night, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not like. Session. Like not, you know, I, I dare you to run out. Right. I dare you to run out into the pool with the whole lot of people butt naked. Like, no, no. I, have I would do it if my husband dared me. I or if I was on a trip. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that I would do it fun. if it's yeah. yeah. That would be fun. But if my husband don't dare me, I'm going to be. Yeah. I know. It's too many cameras around these days. People got their phone know. out. Next thing you know, you're going to be on World Star, Shade Room, jumping in the pool naked. And then your husband's going to be looking at, see, this is why I don't let you go. This is why I don't let you go nowhere. <laughs> your yep. ass act up. Act the fool. Nope, that ain't me, Sean. <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. Um, have you ever used a fake ID? No, I was good at two shoes. Mm. You have? Oh, I have. Mm-mm, I have. I'm not a good. You two-shoe. have? Yeah, I have. Um, I think it was one of my friends back in high school. Her uh, sister gave me her ID so we can get in the club. We weren't even 18, and we got into club chaos, girl. Look, if you book without like tennis shoes on. <laughs> I think that was the night that my mom came looking for me and we were like coming back from the club. That's mm-hmm. the one that um Sean bought you too. Chandra mm-hmm. bought you too. And she wasn't supposed to. She was No, for- no. I don't think Chandra ever took me to a club. That's not Chandra. You told a story where Chandra either she she like made an excuse for you or she was out. Yeah, she might have made excuses for me. Okay. <laughs> this one was just um, I was like with a friend. I was spending spending the night at my friend's house, and mm-hmm. her mom was super cool. She knew we were going to the club, mm-hmm. but my mama that was a absolute no. Like yeah. if she knew we went we went to the club, I would never have gone out ever again. Mine too. Yeah, she, I got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she wouldn't approve of. <laughs> Sorry, mommy. Okay. okay, so have you ever been so drunk that you don't remember what happened the next day? How many times? Yes, absolutely. And I every time I say I would never do that again. I would that feel the wear off. Oh, it's like drink. Like, no <laughs> you know what that experience wasn't that bad it wasn't that bad like I had a lot of fun like I think it was worth me do, trying it one more time. Girl, that's what your your youth is for yeah now now i can't do that now girl i'll be asleep you you, like for 24 hours i will be down for 24 hours but i remember like for my birthday one year i got so drunk i think i told the story on here slightly i got so drunk that i remember the only thing i remember i don't remember getting home but i do remember like hitting my head against the the headboard and just like yes I do remember you saying that yeah that's the only thing I remember about that night I don't remember how we got where we were I don't remember taking a drink I just remember being so drunk that I did that and then had to go to Six Flags with Sean and his family the next day look I for Masaki's birthday at um Top Golf I woke up the next day hung over and I hadn't woke um gotten up hung over and so long we had a good time though we had I'm a so good jealous. time jamie was there, <laughs> jamie I was so there. Jealous. little dj was I there we need a redo i know we say we need to do that more often yeah the guy who was like dang i spent like 150 dollars on shots right <laughs> so like yes we had a good time yeah yeah I that's how you know time. you had a good time mm-hmm. <laughs> can't get that money back oh well nope. we had a good time right Let's see. Have you ever lied to get a job? Uh, duh. Yeah. I tell them I'm going to be on time every time. <laughs> what kind of employee are you? Oh, I'm I'm on time. On time. I'm dependable. dependable. <laughs> Organized. Yes. What else you want to know about me? I'm going to give you every great attribute that every I Every great attribute. <laughs> yes. Terribly. I same. am dependable. <laughs> Oh, I'm extremely dependable. Look, Mm -hmm. then I had a young child and they were like, well, so how are you going to manage working and having a, oh, I have plenty. I mean, I always had plenty plenty of help. A lot of times I'm like, I gotta go. My baby nurse your clothes. I'm about to go get him. Y'all, y'all don't have you late. My, I had to get my baby at school, and then all of a sudden she had a blowout. You know, (laughs) I had to change her pamper at the last minute. You know how that is. Yes. Yes. Fake it until you make it. That's it. Now, I am a dependable employee. Yes, I am too. But, you know, I'm not going to just sit there and be like, you know, sometimes I'm late. Sometimes I may come, you know, when I want to, call mm-hmm. when I want to, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So I had another one that was similar to yours because I had, had you gotten kicked out of a store before. So <laughs> um, have you ever gotten into a fight? Yes. Plenty. I feel like because you have a sister, you've gotten into a lot of fights. But you have to remember my sister is 10 years older than me. That's true. So she was more like my mom for a long time. (laughs) You know what I mean? But um, so I only got into one fight and it was 
over a guy that I didn't even talk to, girl, at, oh. at school. Yeah, like I didn't even he he liked me, but we didn't we didn't talk like that. I hate those. Yeah, and she was she was just I remember coming out my room, Sean was there. Like I didn't snuck Sean into the dorm room. And, and it wasn't about him. <laughs> was it about no. him? She came out there and she was like, came up in my face. She had some big old boobs and she was just like all in my face. And, you know, and I'm like, girl, like get back. Like you got him, you got him. It's okay. And she like, like breast pushed me. That's what I call it. Breast pushed me. Girl, I like blacked out. I beat her ass. And then she went to her room and got an iron and came back out. And I remember this girl, I can't remember her name, but this girl that was there, she was bigger. She was like, she took it out of her hand. She said, uh-uh, if you ain't gonna, if you can't beat her with your hands, you ain't about to do it with That's this right. iron. She was, was like, she was raised by some grown women. She was raised by. The one who said, if you can't, if you can't whip her with your fish, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm-mm, Cause yeah. I didn't have anything right. Oh, she probably, girl. Mm-hmm. that wouldn't have not gone well it didn't because <laughs> i had to i had to get back to my room make sean leave for a minute just you know for a couple of like an hour or so just stay in his car or whatever uh-huh. because i knew like the dorm mom would come to my room trying to figure out what's going on Girl. Yeah, it was a mess. fun times fun times right <laughs> <laughs> what you guys let's see um have you ever flashed someone oh yeah I mean, and not in typical Mardi Gras fashion, but really? yeah. I want to flash at Mardi Gras. Like, Sean would have to get over there. I would be with Sean, but I want to be like, eh, give me the beads. All the beads. Give me the beads first and then flash. Because I didn't see plenty of women on Bourbon Street flash and they done drop them little bitty string beads that you could really? get off the of boat. Yes. Oh, man. But well, that's yeah. why I have to go to Mardi Gras with you. So you have, you know, the yeah, end. Come on, come on. But and I wish they would have. I Mardi definitely Gras. flash them all the time. Oh yeah, me too. Because everybody, oh, can I see your boobs? Yeah. Yep. Hey. Even when my boobs were not cute, I would just be like, eh. <laughs> who cares? The breasts. We've seen them before. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it me or you? It's me. You. Uh huh. And I okay. think I have one more. Ha- okay, you got one more. Let I think me- I have two. I think I okay. Okay. <laughs> have you ever had sex at work? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have it. I want to. I mean, technically, but I you work with your man. Job. So yeah, I know. He so. too scary. He ain't gonna do it. I asked him one time what he do, and he was just like, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, that would sounds fun. So I mean, technically we can have sex at work now since we both working from home that's true so you no know, you can you can re- you can really make that happen but i i don't we got a lot of creepers <laughs> at our job so sure. they just be all over the place like wow. you'll be you'll go to your your car for lunch and all of a sudden you'll see somebody like roaming like what are you doing sure. i used to try to go park somewhere where there was no light Mm-hmm. And that way I could be, or I used to take my husband's keys and get in his truck because he has dark tinted windows. So mm-hmm. that way I can have some privacy and nobody stopping waving. Hey, I'm on break. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk. Like okay. that's why I came to my, my car for privacy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Let me see. Have you ever sexed it the wrong person? No, no. Now I am very mm-hmm. intentional on who I'm sexting. <laughs> Making sure this naked booty is going right. to, <laughs> to the right person. Yeah. Dude. I don't want to be like, hey, bro, your wife, um, just, uh, no. Nah. Sorry. Mm-mm. 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 What about you? Or have you ever, like, sent something, not not a sexy picture, but like a, like a sexy, like, damn, I You're want like to. like talking like nasty? Yeah. No, I'm yeah. telling you. I'm intentional. You're yeah. not about to see. Right. Now I've sent the wrong text to somebody, but it was nothing like, like what you doing? Damn, mm-hmm. I ain't mean to send it to you. Or, yeah, like those are fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other, if I know I'm about to send something a little raunchy, I'm making sure it's I'm going making through. sure double double checking like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Okay, so have you ever had a crush on any of your friends' dads? No, but they had a crush on mine. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. They used to always I, want to come by your listen, house. Let me see. I 
remember one time we went to this, I forgot the name of this little restaurant in Fairfield. It was um at the Fairfield Civic Center, something like that. Anyways, it was like this little restaurant. We went and my dad's very handsome. <laughs> a little light little thing, <laughs> a little red thing. I saw your daddy, right? Uh-huh. Was he at the graduation? No, he didn't come to the, okay. my mom. I, I, I know I saw your mom. Okay. Yeah, my um, my mom came, but my dad, he's like super red, you know, guy anyways. But he, um, we were at this restaurant and this woman was like, like following him. Yeah. And my mom was there, but he was, my mom, he was following, she was following him and she finally went up to him and said something. Now I'm right there. I'm like listening to the whole thing laughing. Cause I, of course I think it's hilarious. I'm in high school. Mm-hmm. And, um, he was like, no, I'm married, you know, because I, I don't ever think I've ever seen my dad wear, um, a wedding ring. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. I think he lost it and they just never got it replaced. Got to tie a string around that thing baby you hear me because he's a <laughs> cute so, yeah and my mom's a cutie but she's i've always seen her with her, her wedding ring you know we'd be so loyal you better we put do. that ring on okay we do. I, you know, i'm going over there today and i'm gonna ask him like what ever happened to your wedding ring i'm going i don't think i've ever asked that you know at this point 40 plus years and it's like whatever he ain't doing that they can have each other phone <laughs> for days <laughs> like no they're not doing nothing but I just would like to know, like, why do you never replace? Like, did you just continue to keep losing rings? And she was yeah. like, oh, uh-uh. But yeah, I know he lost one. Let me ask you one more question. Okay. Have you ever been a peeping Tom? Like, you see neighbors and their windows are open and they're like- Let me tell you something. <laughs> I see, um, like, if I was to look in a window and I see a couple or- a two people like making out uh-huh. like i'm gonna sit there and watch me there. too and is that weird i don't care <laughs> <laughs> i don't care i'm gonna watch it's just human nature i don't know some people will be like oh my god nope i'm gonna watch and i'm probably going <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> girl look at you you, me better me. Than Bonds. you guys did great the other night <laughs> keep it up keep it up Every okay. night, same time, right? Same time, right? Ten, okay. After I got the, you. After I'll after be the, there. I'll be watching. Right with my one high hand. Right. <laughs> that is hilarious. That was a good game. Yes, we're gonna delve into some hot topics, and actually, this episode is just gonna be completely hot uh-huh. topics. That was so much. Yeah. That has been going on this freaking week. Well, the last two weeks, yeah. The oh, last, yeah, the last two weeks, yeah. yeah. So we're going to start off with giving our condolences and rest in peace to um, the eight people who were murdered in Atlanta outside of the massage parlors. Mm-hmm. There was an Atlanta shooting at a spa targeting the Asian community. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been racist acts towards the Asian community Um for some time now, but on this particular day, a racist 21 year old man, Robert took eight lives from their family with a senseless hate crime. He wanted to say that it was basically because he was a sex addict and, um, but no, maybe you are, you, maybe you are a sex addict, but you are also a racist. You are also a lot and of a things. Murderer. And, a, and a murderer. <laughs> it's one thing to be a racist do that in your own time and on your own right business. but to take somebody's life right i don't know i didn't even understand the correlation and i'm sure they probably just put that out there because i'm just gonna say he's a young white man and they want to kind of coddle and mm-hmm. kind of glaze over the acts that they do mm-hmm. they didn't, did they even call him a domestic terror because that i mean that is domestic terrorism That's right? terrorist listen he's in my book he's a terrorist Yes, he is a terrorist. Yes. So I don't understand how the correlation between him having a sex addict, I mean, a sex addiction and targeting a specific community of people. At the spies at, at that. I don't even understand that. Yeah, he, he's definitely a terrorist in my book. I don't, I just don't know what to say. I feel so bad for those families. Um, we know, we understand, we get it. 
we've been there you know what i mean yeah, like part of the black community we definitely get it and yeah, we're, yeah i definitely stand with that community and solidarity in any community who's targeted because of their race and you know the asian community has been i mean i don't even know prior to coronavirus or COVID how um what's the word i want to use how just how much attacks that communities have been receiving but i know once COVID hit and then of course the former president used to call it the china virus and right just right. disrespectful stuff like that and you have people who feed into that and that's just like uh, i guess the muslim community after 9 11 it's like you can't target a specific community because of the act of one person so right. i just uh i don't know i my condolences go to them i know there was one lady um she lived in the u.s no family and I think she's from China. Don't don't quote me on this, but she had two boys. I know for sure. And that they were all they had in Atlanta. They have no wow. relatives in the United States whatsoever. And now they're left without their mom and then trying to figure out what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. And they're scared. I can only imagine not only are they scared, are they scared because of um, their mom is gone and they don't have anybody but they're scared because now they know firsthand how racist and how hateful people are. You know, I, I really do. I, I love being in this country, but then I don't. I have like a really love hate. I want to go to Canada. Can we go to Canada? You I really want to go somewhere where like the emphasis on what you look like, your ethnicity, your religion, like it does not matter. Are you a good person? Well, where is that? It matters in Africa. It yeah. matters in, uh, we see in the UK yeah. <laughs> with the, with the, my mind. right. So where is my land in my mind? I just, I don't know. I just feel like, I think you can navigate this world mm -hmm. and navigate from people that you don't want to associate yourself with without having to be harmful or disrespectful or just just ugly towards them that's mm -hmm. just me and my wishful thinking y'all i live in a yeah. that's how i need to live in my head because whatever's yeah. going on around us i just i can't put we'll myself in sad. it you know it yeah. just will put a damper on life and life is it, so much life to live but dang it it why do i have to live life and fear like i know Yesterday, I saw a video of Tariq. I don't know his name. I think it's Michael. Is it Michael Rainey? Yes. Um, the guy, the little young guy from um, Tariq. Um, and he was pulled over and he feels like the because someone in the back seat pulled out their camera to record it, this cop came to his um, to his door, maybe for, he didn't know why he was pulled over, mm -hmm. but he had already was on defense, already had his hand on his gun. And his mask down. Yes. And his mask down. He was already ready to be on attack to hurt this kid. Like he's a kid. You I know what? This is why uh, I, I hate to even get in this, but I do not like the police system. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like the police system. First of all, it was already established because they wanted to capture runaway slaves. So they right. still have that same mentality. Yeah. They think mm -hmm. that we are the threat. No, yeah. it's okay to approach a situation and even if the person is a threat to de-escalate, and I see them do it so often with white individuals, mm -hmm. but as soon as it comes to black individuals, you're already alert, you're already on 10. And that's that that bothers my soul to the spirit because I have a young black son. I have a husband, I have brothers, I have nephews, I have people in my life that I love that I have to wonder, like, is this gonna happen to you? Right, right. I agree. I agree. It's sad. Um, definitely our condolences to yeah. um, those eight victims, um, those six of them that were Asian women. Our hearts go out to them. We are praying for their families. Um, and this is just senseless. And we're praying for a better country, a better uh, just system in general. I don't know how uh, Biden is going to go about um protecting our communities but we are definitely hoping that some things are put in place i know it starts in the heart it starts in the heart but 
hopefully some things are put in place to better protect our communities from hate crimes and um, these attacks. Right. And it is Biden did say he was going to consider some laws and policies, but if you can sign executive orders for anything else, I think this is something that needs to be signed immediately. Yeah. Mandatory. It needs Mandatory. a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not the expert, but they'll figure it out. Yep. yep. Another sad story that we have to talk about is the the shooting in Boulder, Colorado mm-hmm. at the grocery store. The which grocery store, girl. The that, grocery store. Yes. You How many people can go it? to the grocery store now? Was it 10 people that were murdered? I think, I think so. it was oh my 10 God. people that were murdered inside of a grocery store by this 21 year old guy, um, Ahmad Al Awi, whatever his name is, don't care. Right. Honestly, because what are you doing? He had a mental illness as well. Well, that's what they're saying. He had a mental illness. Of course, of course, of course. He knew what he was doing, just like his family member said that he was playing with guns just two days before. Like he was just sitting there playing. Now, granted, we have to be intentional about seeking um, or seeing people's behaviors that's around us. Mm -hmm. If we see something that's not right, we have to speak out and not just internalize our feelings about what's going on or what we're seeing Mm -hmm. i do feel like if are you speaking about like his family i'm speaking about in general grace like i feel like if yeah if his family would have spoken out about what they saw what they felt was going on with this young man going back to um the school shooting the first school shootings in wasn't in colorado it was in boulder colorado as well yeah like these kids were planning this. There were signs that something was going to happen and it was going to be bad, whether they hurt themselves or hurt someone else. Like you got to speak up. You got to see and be vigilant of your surroundings and your family members and the people that you surround yourself with, because you don't know if you're saving a life or saving theirs. But it's also the, um, the authorities as well, because in a lot of these situations, there are some family members parents even who alerted the authorities that hey I don't Mm -hmm. think this this person is is got it all right they have guns they've threatened us before and look what happens right right. but how do you how do you how do you like rectify that situation if you may see the person and they may seem sane and you can't take them in because they seem sane and you can't find weapons but the next thing you know they're shooting up people in a grocery store but why was he 21 able to um, purchase assault rifles? Right. Not just a regular handgun, mm-hmm. but assault rifles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And why was he just shot in the leg? Let's let's talk about that. Why was he not gunned down? Because he didn't look like you or me. And still, look- <laughs> and still has not given a reason to why he did this but you know what i have no problem with any person well yeah i don't have a problem with any person being taken in if they're a suspect but have that same energy for everybody everybody yeah if you're gonna shoot him in the leg make sure you shoot everybody in the leg if you yep. take him, make sure you tase everybody if you're gonna do a traffic stop make sure the person who's running who's black doesn't get shot in the back I'm just saying, make sure if we go into a church and kill a whole bunch of white people that we you take us to McDonald's or rallies. Right, right after. Trying I trying say, like, keep that energy all the way around. Right. Yeah. Look, condolences to those condolences. people as well. I hate keep yeah. saying these condolences because mm-hmm. it's hurtful. And I and I never want to know what these people are going through. Yeah. I never want to be on that other side. I don't. Yeah. And I, I really pray that. I never other people <laughs> don't have to lose their loved ones in such a tragic way. I go to the grocery store all of the time. Oh, my son God. works in a grocery store. I told him even before this happened, always keep your head on a swivel. You don't know who's coming in there and just always make sure you protect yourself. That's it. That's it. I mean, we should not have to go through life like that, but what unfortunately that's what we have to do. It's reality at this point. It is, but on a lighter note. Yes. Well, kind of. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I saw a um, a post that Sweetie talked about pretty privilege. 
Texas. Have you ever dealt with pretty privilege? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I, I think sometimes I'm oblivious to it because I really think it's my charm and my personality. Uh-huh. I'm <laughs> and thinking my it's my charm and my personality, right? I think it might be the... Uh, and, and my smile. smile. All of it. Yeah. Yeah, no. But what it, did she say about like the pretty privilege though? She stated that, she said, I, this is her saying, I won't act like there isn't a certain type of power that comes with people admiring your face, but that's not something that gets me off. That's what she said. And I agree with her. I I agree. Agree. I'm not going to say that um, I haven't used my pretty face to get me something or get me out of something, mm-hmm. but I'm not saying that it's my pretty, like my pretty face makes me. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, I think anybody who has something about them, whether or not it's their pretty face, their personality, their demeanor, just their charm. If you have that and you can use that to your advantage, I'm using in quotes, use it to your advantage. It's still a part of who you are, but if people are going to appreciate that about you, then yeah. Well, no, I'm not saying, we're not saying be funny yeah. you know, with it, but we are saying like, I'm just saying, if you want to go to McDonald's and you got a pretty face and you know they always act <laughs> up when you ask them for extra sauce, but then you put your... They're going to they gonna give you three napkins instead of one. Right. You know, be, that's okay. It's okay to. It's okay. <laughs> to you. Okay. Yeah. Name a situation, if you can think of one, because I'm sure there's so many, where <laughs> your looks have gotten you just whatever you want. Not with your husband, because that's just. Honestly, I'm going to be real, Grace. I really believe I've gotten out of tickets. I've got, I've gotten out of, um, I never got out of, I'd have been at the bar. I'd have been at the bar where the bartender was like giving me drinks. And then I was like, okay, I need, I was like, well, you can put it on my tab. He was like, eh, you good. No you know, yeah. that's, that's pretty privileged. Um, yeah. and that's, that's mild, you know, that's, yeah, that's yeah. anybody, they're just doing it because they want to do it. And yeah, the, I, I didn't even want to say no. I didn't give anything. Right. Um, but it honestly, it happens all the time. It really does. Um, but pretty is subjective. Like it you don't, you, so. who do you think is pretty that most are handsome that most people may not think is like maybe a celebrity or somebody. Oh, you don't know mm. my my cute is like i don't know i'm gonna say that most people think is not yeah i don't know who's yours not this is not somebody that i just crush and stand over yeah. but i think seal is handsome in his own way i don't know if you know the singer seal who has like the scar across his face mm-hmm. but i think he's handsome i don't know if it's the chocolate skin because you know i love Chocolate it's, the sweat. it's the confidence and the confidence like when and the fact was, that he had one of the most beautiful models on his arm Heidi Klum he was married yeah. to her for a long time yeah yeah so I mean the 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 confidence exudes yeah. so much handsomeness and see I think that he would be able to get away with a lot of things because of his confidence and honestly he's handsome to me so I just, I don't, that, like you said, it's subjective. So that beauty mm-hmm. part is subjective, but Saweetie, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. She's her mother. Mom, she's her her father. Mom gorgeous. Like she, she comes come from gorgeous. She comes from good stock. Yes. She comes from really good genes. Yeah. So, I mean, but that, that really is a thing. Pretty privilege is a thing. Um, I'd say use it. Like if it can get you what you need, what you want, it, uh, use it. Don't use it in it. business, use it in at the grocery store, use it at the snow cone truck, <laughs> use it. Use it in the line at the club, whatever. Yes, you use it. Use it. But I don't remember. abuse it. No. Uh, well, <laughs> come on, don't abuse it. I mean, shucks. That's hard. You asking, you asking for too much right now, Grace. You asking for too much. <laughs> So silly. all right sweetie well you know what you take care like you said you, you stay was pretty and stay pretty mm-hmm. well you know and then uh, in other news with sweetie i just thought about that you know she broke up with quavo i know 
They were so cute together. They were cute together, but it seems like a lot is coming out. Um, her, his brother is saying, y'all don't know, sweetie. Y'all don't know the type of person she is. And then she's saying, listen, I'm not going to deal with all. I don't have to deal with all this BS from Quavo, like all the cheating and stuff like that. I don't have to deal with that. I'm beautiful. I got my own money. I'm educated. I do not have to put up with things I don't have to put up with. So Dang, I just thought about that. That's I another know. Thing. From the outside looking in, of course I want to know because right. I think they were like the cutest little couple. I but now, like, they just abruptly like broke it off. And I'm like, what is really going on? Right, right. So that sucks, but I'm sure she's going to get back on her. She already back on her feet. Like, she already TikToking and doing her. <laughs> She's always been making like these creative videos. I love yeah. it when she does like her little Birkin bag videos. Mm-hmm. With she's all her Birkins so- talking. That she's I love her. Super cute. Well, her cute self. Yeah. What we got next? Girl, these people cut. First of all, Florida ain't never been closed. You, listen, Will never be closed. Florida don't. They don't know what a pandemic is. Especially for spring break. Girl, did you see in Miami these? They would. I think this is like the largest crowd of spring breakers that I've ever seen in my life in Miami. Listen, <laughs> these people like when I told y'all I was relaxing and chilling. I was relaxing and like an old woman watching the news. So I got <laughs> firsthand of what these crazy people was doing in in Miami and then the the um lady that's uh I guess she's over the NAACP in Florida or in Miami Mm -hmm. she spoke out and she was just saying listen y'all gonna have to keep this same energy for everybody but lady are you looking and seeing who are making who's making all this the riots and making all this noise and all this trouble it's us acting a hot mess and a fool one thing I did see, <laughs> I know you had to see it. The what? girl who was had her legs all spread open, spread, oh, and then boy pulled her off that and grabbed her. If you don't get your ass, she said they both went to spring break separately, separately. With mm-hmm. But you know what? You and she was, was trying to live her, too much. Yeah, she was trying to live her best life, and he you said, know, I, don't, eh, eh. "I don't agree with men putting their hands on women." But I, I'm going to have to say, but he didn't really put his hands on her. He just slid her ass off that hood as he should have. Like, girl, what are that. you doing? What are yeah. you doing? You went viral. Even Cardi B posted you. You did your thing, but you got your legs cocked open like that. Yeah. You somebody mama. Somebody, somebody new mama. You a new mama. Well, that's yo, probably yo. why she was doing it. <laughs> she My was- goodness. <laughs> Yes, girl. She was getting her best. She was living her best life, he and he scooped her ass right up up off that car. And he did a great job. Kudos yeah. to your baby daddy. You need to he keep did. him. It didn't. I don't even think he was saying. He probably was like mumbling to her. Get your, your, ass, get your motherfucking with ass. his teeth tight. Uh-huh. <laughs> he knew cameras was rolling. He said, "I'm not about to snatch her ass up for real, for real." But I'm hey. gonna ass up. Yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. <laughs> well, also, did you see the young guy who trying to dine and dash? Girl, and they got his butt, didn't they? Girl, how are you going to try to dine and dash? You got a whole Gucci little uh, sling across your body. Oh my God. Or Louis Vuitton or whatever. It was yes. designer. I hope it was like a dare. Like, I hope somebody dared him to do that. Like, you know, when you go to spring break, you just like do some of the craziest things. Like, I, okay. I think I told you that before. Like, I, I would I wish like I would want to do something like that like just dare me to dine and dash and I just do something crazy you know I don't know if I would actually do it. I probably would slide it slide the money and then try to do it but because I'm I scary a little bit <laughs> yeah I'm scary but um maybe it was a dare we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt I ain't giving him scary. no benefit of the doubt his old okay, right. so now if it was a dare that probably would have been a good way to escape you got a whole crowd of people you just run you just never know but you you look I mean you were noticeable buried they got his ass though he must have had a bill on him they $30 should. I'm gonna let you go you got right, look, right. $70 Wait, bill, I'm gonna three, let you go. three four hundred dollars you paying this and then he tried to get away again they said uh uh-uh. They got his ass. All on national television. <laughs> Sir, you went viral. From All on Black Twitter. I think he'll never <laughs> try to dine and dash again. 
I bet he won't. Nope. I don't think I'll do that. I mean, I'm at this point, I read I want to give you your money. Yeah. Especially you did a good job. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the the riots, the um the curfew at eight o'clock, it it is sad. I understand why they put the curfew down because you know they have to not only protect um, the people that came in just trying to have a good time, but they have to protect the community, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the businesses, the, um, the people, the residents, they have to protect their, their people, but so what were they rioting for? Because they didn't came down, you know, how expensive Miami is. They mm-hmm. didn't came all the way to Miami to have a great time. They've been stuck in the house for a year and a half with, you know, quarantine. And they came down to have the spring break of their life to break out, to enjoy people. And you didn't put a curfew on them. I get it. So but they, the you same know, time you knew you were going to a place that had a curfew. Well, they, they didn't, they occurred the curfew after they acted a fool. Oh, okay. So the curfew was only um issue once everybody was just like not abiding to the regular rules yes okay i get that Mm -hmm. because i don't spend my money at least let me be on the beach let me get a little bonfire going that were down there and they you know had to cut their their trip short you know because there was a curfew at eight they had plans they wanted to go eat at certain places at a certain time and they had to cut it short because these restaurants was like abiding by the curfew as they should it yeah it sucks they lost out on business it sucks hey but florida they- hey florida huh. this is grace speaking you guys are in a pandemic just fyi yeah. fyi okay my god it's still a pandemic covid is still alive okay they are wild then it's spring break over uh maybe not for some it wouldn't be over for me <laughs> Like Sunday night at 12 p.m. That's I mean, 12 a.m. Like that's when it'll be over. Mm-hmm. And then roll but, to work. Hopefully they're down there and there. They've calmed down because girl, it got so bad that they had like bottles all in the street. They were, uh, um, they were messing up people's cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, windshields had been broken. Uh, they were stepping, uh, stumping on people's, on the top of people's cars. I don't people, like that. Don't yeah, vandalize was, people's cars. It was us. It was us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, was, I don't like that because I would never want to vandalize somebody's property because I would know how it would feel. I was, I felt completely violated when someone broke into my vehicle. So yeah. I can only imagine how these people feel. These foreigners, you don't even live here. You're coming and destroying our city and then we have to clean this up while y'all go home. Right. No, that's not cool, y'all. Don't that's do that. Not, don't do that at all. Not at all. On to the next thing, girl. Uh, this, so, what? what you, I got so much to say about this. What, are we talking about Gary Owen? Oh, well, no. You can go ahead and talk about Gary. I really... Oh, well, I just wanted to... I think this is, has been like the few weeks of like relationship breakups. Yeah, it has. Like Saweetie and Quavo no longer. Mm-hmm. You know what I really love? I love when he did that little Taco Tuesday song and they was like jamming to their little Taco t- I know they were cute. So cute. But now Gary and Owen and his wife, his black wife, his, his black queen, his black queen are getting divorced after 18 years of marriage. Yeah, that's sad. It is sad. And I still don't understand what's going on because one morning I woke up, I'm listening to the Breakfast Club, of course, and she just put out this, I guess, this post, which is not typical of her I don't follow her but I wouldn't think that would be typical of her because I follow him Mm -hmm. and she said something about um she tried to be quiet out of respect for her kids and Claudia Jordan has me on one this morning I don't know how Claudia Jordan got brought into it but apparently I guess one of Claudia Jordan friends was messing with Gary Owen but then Claudia Jordan said that that's not true But something had to happen for this lady to say, you know, for, I don't care if I'm embarrassing myself or my kids, I'm getting on social media and I'm letting the world know that he ain't shit. I wonder what he did because he always talk about he loved his black queen. He always do. But he might love other black queens too. <gasps> but you know what? That's going to, that's going to, I'm going to ask a question because that's going to trickle down into like, the last thing we talk about on these hot topics so right. you, 
I'm gonna I'm keep that in my mind. Right, right. <laughs> but I'm um, sad to see that they're um that they're divorcing. If this is true, yeah. like I really would hate to see that because they've been together for 23 years, been married 18. She said she was with him when he had good credit and nothing else. Wow, that's well, crazy. He's gonna have something. He gonna have good credit. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's that's crazy. I hate that, but um. Hopefully everything will unfold and we'll have more like information on what happened and how it happened and we can kind of talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, but that's yeah. all I know. But you know, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, I'm sorry, girl. But what I'm not sorry is <laughs> how Kurt Franklin cussed his son. Okay, Kurt Franklin's son, Carry On Franklin, who is 33 years old, my age. He was from a free, a previous relationship. Leaks an audio recording of his father cussing him out. He stated him and his son, uh, well, Kurt Franklin stated that him and his son has a toxic relationship and have tried everything, including therapy. Have you heard the recording? I did hear the recording. Honestly, that sounds like any Black household that I know of. If you don't get your black ass here, you mother- your black egg. I wish you would disrespect me a motherfucking gang. Okay, so it wasn't I, my household. I ain't gonna lie, it wasn't my household. It wasn't my household either because my mom never didn't heard my, my parents cuss. I have never heard my parents cuss. But let me tell you, I have been a part of some households mm-hmm. that have gotten a butt cussed out. Yes, and that and it didn't. It wasn't. Listen, I would never disrespect my mom especially with my words or leaking an audio oh my god that, that you know when me and her having a conversation like i would never do that That's he was so disrespectful. So, he was so disrespectful and at this point i know kurt franklin said this is my son i'm just, i'm going to continue to try because he's he also said in the interview i think with tamra tamra and, um i think her name is tamra, tamra hall yeah Mm -hmm. um he said in an interview that he he never knows he can't give up on him because he never knows when that next call will be that call that's going to be like life changing like he's going to say okay i'm ready to change my life i'm ready to try again i'm ready to make changes he never knows when that is going to be and that's a father you know what i mean but i'm not going to say that parents don't get to a point where they are pissed off and they come out their character because children will make you do that. Look, okay. So I had my one of my friends brought this up. One of my best my best friends, Parker. Oh my god, girl! I think I was pregnant with Paisley. I, I'm not sure. I might have not been pregnant. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But we were coming from church. I think Parker was upset about something, and she was throwing a fit so bad that I could have done something to my <laughs> child that I would have uh, would have regret she like she was in the back seat in in her in her little seat mm-hmm. and um she was throwing things at me while I was driving she was throwing uh the car she had started to let the let the um the window up and down I had to put the the lock on the window she was screaming throwing things at me then she tried to get out the car while the car was moving no she didn't when I stopped listen 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 when I tell you when I heard that audio (laughs) from Kurt Franklin I knew exactly where that came from (laughs) sometimes you children can get you to that place where you you got to like it can take you all the way out your character mm-hmm. and you have to bring yourself back. That does not mean that he is not a God fearing man. That does not mean that God does not come first in his life. That does not mean that he does not have the respect for his children, but what his children will not do is continuously disrespect him. And look, I was having a conversation with my brother about this and we weren't even talking about Kurt Franklin, but we were talking about like just respect of, like the parental respect from children Mm -hmm. i understand kirk franklin and we were also talking about like 
Yes, Kurt Franklin is a gospel singer. He is an amazing gospel. I don't even know if I want to call him a singer because he just produces a lot of great music for, um, I mean, he does sing, but whatever. Right. We were we were talking about how people hold him up to this certain standard because he is a of the church. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Christians, they like to see, see the flaw, run with that and say, you are just like, you're the worst person ever. But in this case, I didn't see people do that because I think people totally understand that parental child relationship. And I can see from his point, because I'm sure he's done a lot for his son over the years. I'm sure he's given things as every parent should like this is we brought you into this world so yes we're obligated to take care of you but if we give our time our money our love our resources our everything to you and you're disrespecting me absolutely i'm gonna i'm gonna lose my mind i'm gonna go off on you because you are unfucking grateful I'm gonna I'm gonna say some things because that's just gonna be my emotion taking over. And afterward, I'm sure he felt remorseful because he doesn't want to speak to his son like that, I'm assuming. Right, right. I've been in that point where I've said some ugly things to my child. And I'm like, I would humble myself. And and this is because of my own emotion, which I know I had to like just real real bag. But I would go to him if I felt like I was wrong. I would say, look, I'm sorry that I talked to you that way. I didn't mean to because mm-hmm. I love you. And we will have a, a conversation and an understanding. Will Warren ever record me being mean to him? No, because he wouldn't even know if I'm about to be mean to him or not. So it's like, right. he doesn't have it on the ready. But his son recording his dad, knowing how influential his dad is, knowing how many great things that he has going for himself, recording him, I think he did that so people could kind of like hate him at the moment like he didn't like him at the moment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he's gonna regret that he's gonna regret that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he absolutely will and I hate the fact that he he put that light on his dad like that but Kirk Franklin is human we understand him like being parents we definitely understand listen y'all going to some churches where y'all pastors sitting up in the pulpit pre uh (laughs) So I know y'all ain't saying nothing about Kurt Franklin. You keep taking your butt back to that church. Hello. So you better keep playing stomp. <laughs> you feel me? Kirk was about to stomp his head. Yeah, he was about to stomp his butt. I wouldn't even the son else also her. said that he didn't have a good relationship with um his dad and his dad's wife, well, wife and yeah. the other children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think he posted like this picture of them on like the cover of Jet. And he was like, this was like the last time that they really had like family interaction. And this was like, this was like an old cover. So mm-hmm. he knows, and he was saying that he knows that there were things that he did that kind of excommunicated him from the family. Mm-hmm. So if you know that you're doing something as well, like don't put your dad out there as if he's just out here cussing you, saying bad things about you. Right. And there's no reason like like there's not going to be any uh repercussions of your actions yeah yeah i don't see kurt franklin in a different light i still like him i still like his podcast that i listen to Mm -hmm. i still love his music because all a lot of his music is on my gospel playlist Mm -hmm. and he's human we're all human so is he am i gonna cancel him because he cussed out his son nope because i can't my damn self yep cancel me for life because i'm still yep. cussing his ass out yep me, me. he's still gonna be my son i'm still gonna love him and i'm still i'm gonna tell him i love him right after. right mm-hmm. period shoot <laughs> but yeah that that's crazy um shoot big ups to kurt for yeah. listen for continuing because you have a lot of parents that just like look this child is unbearable i got i washed my hands of you and clearly he's not washing his hands of him. Clearly he's still picking up his calls. Still, he's, he's still trying. If he can call the, the therapist on the phone, he's still trying to gain his son back, you know? So big ups to him of being a great parent. Kurt said, nigga. <laughs> I know that's right. I felt that one. I was like, <laughs> he, he did something wrong. So. <laughs> I that that like somebody old uncle for real saying nigga, yeah, with the- nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like he had the like he had the cigarette sitting in the corner of his <laughs> <laughs> like he was, he, was flipping, he was flipping the 
flipping the burgers on the on the on the uh on the grill outside. outside. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, be on the I can't deal with you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, Kurt Franklin is not canceled. So no, next, <laughs> somebody else who might be canceled for real, for real, very canceled. <laughs> This Derek dude. Jackson. My God. Now, oh my the God. reason why he would be canceled because he's a straight up hypocrite. Hypocrite. This is a self proclaimed relationship expert. Accountability to all men. Mm. He's a blogger. He's an author of nine books, which is 12. Include, is, oh, it's 12. Okay. Yeah, 12 One of them nice. is Single Mothers are, are for Grown Men. Another one is a cheating man's heart and he has like three sequels to I'm that. I'm about to say he got a cheating man of two and three. And three. And don't forget your crown. Like this is a buster at its best at his finest. <laughs> I just, I, you know, what? okay. So I was introduced to him, not personally, but introduced mm -hmm. to his Instagram like a few years ago. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like he's saying things that make sense because- it's just when you're with someone, you don't want to like mess over them. So he's kind of reiterating. I just thought that he was like reiterating what you should not do in a relationship. Right. But then the more I started listening to him, I was like, I don't like the way he talks. I was like, the way he talks just seems kind of salesman-ish to me. And he was like, it, it seemed like he was on a bunch of bullshit. And I was like, I'm not following this guy because- yeah. I just don't feel like, like, what are you telling us women? I don't get it. Yeah. Did you, have you ever followed him? No. Okay. I, I saw a couple of his videos on uh -huh. um, responses to certain, um, certain situations, mm -hmm. but I don't think I ever liked them. I never followed him. I never reposted him. Uh, I reposted his latest one. Uh, I think it was seven signs to, uh, that, you know, your man is, loves you or something like that and i, I asked are y'all still listening to him like y'all still taking heat but let me let me get this straight mm -hmm. i do think the things that he was saying was very true only way to Absolutely. know a cheater is to be one only he way to uh, yeah like he knew he knows everything he's telling you the playbook because he's been using it like he's been doing it he's so been. i don't think the things that he was saying was false information or um it wouldn't be uh great information for a woman to right. know about how a man acts or his behavior right. or how to keep him accountable of his actions or even women accountable of their actions right but, um he's definitely a hypocrite because he made it seem as if um he insinuated that he was a good man like he was uh, a family man he was a, a loyal man faithful man and that just wasn't the case uh, we found yeah. out that he cheated I think multiple times on his wife Denea Jackson um, but he was recently uh, exploited by a name a lady named Candace we'll get to Denea in a minute yeah yes yes we definitely will um because i think I, I think i will have a different opinion of what grace is going to say about Nia, <laughs> but we'll see because we have not talked about this y'all exactly. we try not to talk about hot topics because we want to get uh first opinion a real of, raw conversation yeah a real raw conversation of what what how we feel about the situation right um but him I, I definitely think he was giving out great advice, um, good advice, things that you can follow, things that you can, but he's definitely a hypocrite. He's, um, and, and like Danae said, he it's his time to lay in his bed and um, for people to see truly who he is mm -hmm. and not, not, it's yeah, it's, it's not time to follow him, you know? Right. The devil shows his, his head different ways. <laughs> and I think because he was perpetuating this person that he was not and the life that he was not living is the thing that kind of blew up like so big and his very passive way of responding to the allegations of him cheating because at first he didn't really admit to cheating he said he was being sexual without having sex but you can't tell me that you have a young lady in your home in your bed taking pictures in your bed yes. and you guys have not had sex then he wants to double back and say that 
they did have sex and he did have sex with other women he was inappropriate with other women yes like dude you your credibility is already shot shot and now you're trying to save face because you want to save your brand and i'm sure that's where he makes his money Mm. so now you're a liar you're a hypocrite you're a cheater you allegedly possibly got someone pregnant that was not your wife everything you're telling these women who hinge on your word is wrong and you know what somebody was telling me about like how these women are like kind of stupid and vulnerable for listening to listening to him but I'm like I don't think they're stupid and vulnerable it's like sometimes it's human nature for you to get confirmation of how you feel about yourself from other people Mm -hmm. not to say that that's everybody's case but that's a lot of women like some women are very broken and they need to hear that look you're worth it you don't need anyone to cheat on you this is how you spot a cheater or xyz so imagine how they feel being misled by someone who's doing something that they're trying to, I guess, get out of themselves. And it's so crazy that you bring that up because I saw this meme that said, broke men use emotional manipulation and rich men use financial manipulation. Oh, absolutely. That is also said, if you have self-validation, you won't fall trapped to broken men and and their narcissistic behaviors. Mm -hmm. I thought that was like so eye-opening. Like you could- you could have not said that a better way. You just, you really could have not said it a better way. So, um, and and it's so true, you know, men or people, toxic people will take on this face as they will, um, they know how to manipulate you. They know what you need to keep going. They know how to feed into your, um, love language they know how what you need from them as a person so they're going to push that on you to make you feel like you um you're getting what you want right, right. but really they're controlling you with what you want and you you won't notice that until they switch up on you <laughs> right I mean a lot of people kind of manipulate emotional the emotional psyche of people who they know mm-hmm. are damaged and weak yeah. and that's mm-hmm. what he did he's like okay yeah shit he had the inside scoop he was inside scoop on both ends of the spectrum he was the cheater he was the husband he knew how to manipulate his wife mm-hmm. he knew how to manipulate other women other women and yep. i know that was the doctor who um that he was um seeing that was allegedly pregnant by him and she said she didn't even know about his social media presence. And that could absolutely be true. Like you could be on social media and have 12,000, 12 million followers and one person may not be following you. And I don't know anything about you. Anything about you. So yeah. the fact that she was manipulated and other women were manipulated and duped by him, that just boggles my mind that he got away with it for so long. Mm-hmm. Do you think his wife knew anything? Like she had any inkling and just was like, look, I'm just, I'm just. That's hard to say because if he, if this is his business and if he's traveling a lot, now if you're traveling a lot without me, but they have kids. So maybe he's traveling a lot without her. Maybe he might say he's going on a business meeting. And honestly, as a wife, if I trust my husband, if he says he's going on a business meeting, I'm going to think that he's at a business meeting. What other reason are you giving me not to think so? Right, right. I agree. Is she... Um, okay well let's talk about her you ready you <laughs> yes i'm ready i'm ready to have yes. differences yes. of opinion, he, so. his, his 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 you know he's a jerk yes very he, um he did he's not he's human he's he not human. above any man um so what he did should have not been a shock to anybody um I think the shock was that he portrayed this type of person for so long um, and you, I almost made, I almost think he made himself feel like he was <laughs> this person that he was portraying. Well, that's what um, a narcissist is. Exactly. Is that the, the definition, the definition of a narcissist, that's him. This picture it's will true. be in a dictionary. I'm telling yeah, exactly. you, you know, they, they like to update that dictionary. I think his picture might really be yes. right there. 
Yes, yes. Now tell me about this wife. How you feel okay, about this wife? Do we do we wanna do we wanna like dissect this video and then talk about her? We can. We can. You can okay, start. So how do you okay? The videos to me was disturbing. Okay. I felt like she was blinking so many times that somebody had to go in there and rescue her. Like the way he was holding on to her hand, the way he was speaking, and she wasn't saying anything. I feel like she is in a sunken place. But Grace, would not any woman be in a sunken place? I'm not about to sit there with my husband holding his hand while he talk about his infidelity. I definitely I will feel like I'm in a sunken place. But you want me to sit here in front of a, a camera and hold your hand while you admit to sleeping in, with other women, and I'm just no, I'm just not no, that's not me. She you she definitely like, oh. didn't look like herself. I know this whole bonnet thing, <laughs> y'all. It definitely didn't look like a bonnet. It, it was like a little bit <laughs> a little a little hat she threw on. She, yeah. She definitely didn't um, pull up her appearance for this. She wasn't, you can tell Danae is not trying to sugarcoat anything right. for Derek. Um, but now as a wife, mm -hmm. um, if she decides to stand by her husband. I'm sorry, that was nasty. Oh, no, you <laughs> If she decides to stand by her husband, mm -hmm. am I going to fall her for that? Hell no. no. You, you know how many women that are not in the public eye that stand by their husband when things happen and they brush them under, under a rug or they keep going with the relationship? Plenty. She's not the first and she's not going to be the last. Mm -hmm. So I wish people would shut up about her appearance. This, she didn't feel like putting no makeup on. Well, her appearance didn't bother me. Her, what she had on that I could care less. That's her. And she even said that herself. She doesn't. Yeah. She doesn't That's put her that for mm -hmm. other people. This is who right. she is. Absolutely. That is who you are. My thing is, I just felt like I wanted her to take care of herself. I'm not saying she's not taking care of herself, but have more respect for herself and just gather herself. She could have did her own video without him because honestly, she had more, yeah. more personality, so to speak, in her video than his. Because in his... I felt like she was a prisoner. Like he told her, "You sit your ass there. You not. Take you smile and right. And we're gonna get this over with and whatever." But her thinking about her husband. That's what you do. That is your husband. Your marriage and your relationship is your own. Mm -hmm. How you choose to support your spouse is how you choose to support your spouse. But for me personally, don't expect me to come sit by your side after you humiliated me completely in front of basically the entire world this was like news right right it was it was it went viral it did um she like you said she did have a lot more to say in her own video she did mm -hmm. she recorded a video by herself still not made up still not um oh my god anybody <laughs> so she kept the same energy mm -hmm. period um, but she also stated that this is not her issue. This is not for her to take on. This is for Derek to take on his, this is his issue. Like it is. he is his bed. He needs to lie in it. So don't make her the topic of conversation. Like keep him the topic of conversation. Like he did this. Now I'm going to, I'm going to support him in a, in the sense of our marriage, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to, I'm not supporting the action is what she's saying. Right. Um, she, she stated a lot. You can tell she's definitely a God fearing woman. Um, and <laughs> she said, you see armor fatigue. I see the armor of God. Armor of God. Let me tell you, I've been married for 10 years and I've seen a 40 year marriage. It takes the arm. It takes knowing and recognizing and seeing the enemy Everybody coming, have me into talk to your home, <laughs> coming into your your um yourself coming mm -hmm. into your spouse and knowing how to fight him off if you are steadfast in god and his word you are not going to know how to get through some of the difficult times that marriage is going to get going to bring to you right and lady clearly has been is trying to use her tools to the best of her ability to I get with that but once you're a habitual offender, mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to be keep bringing God into this. No, we talked about this, about uh, plenty of situations, even yeah. like Chris on Married at First Sight, him and, right. um, what's her name? Uh, yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to understand, like God is not going to come down and bop you on your head and say, eh, 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 don't do this anymore. But you have to use your, your better judgment and your discernment and your discretion like, no, this is not her fault. She should definitely not have been dragged into this. He mm -hmm. did that to her. He did. He needs to clean that up. Mm -hmm. So, but I can't tell her what to do in her relationship as I would never want anyone to tell me what to do in my relationship. But I can guarantee you, I'm not going to have you embarrass me like this and just go to war for you and go to bat for you. I'm not. I, do you feel like... <laughs> I saw a, a comment that said, um, man, in that first video with him and her, she looked like, like, you know how you'd be like, blink twice if you need help. Mm -hmm. That's why I said she was blinking and nobody was like, like, nobody was helping nobody her. Nobody was um, helping her. Man, that grip on his, her arm was hella tight. Yes. Yes. Um, it's hard to say really, you know what I mean? You, you, I'm not going to sit here and say, that I've never done anything or, you know, like as far as stayed when I maybe felt like I should have went or yeah. I know a person that stayed when I feel like they should have went. Women are going to stay with whom they want to. That's why you have to have a really good support system mm -hmm. because you can have friends and you can be like, or I can come to you, Grace, and be like, he did this, 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 and this, and I can't stand him. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to leave. And then the next day, I'm like, this is my baby. This is my I boo. wouldn't look at you differently because that's your husband. You have that's history. Your, and yeah, I, that's how I feel like people have, people have to look at her. Like, we can condemn him all we want. But as far as her, I just feel like we have to be sympathetic towards her situation, be sympathetic towards... Um, the things that she's going through, how she's how she trying to it. handle it. Yeah. You know, it may not be the way that we handle it, but that's the way that she's choosing to handle it. Um, and if she decides to leave in the future, we need to be sympathetic towards that. It doesn't need to be, oh, she, oh, now she finally seeing him for right. him. Or you know, no, time. that's not Let, right. People do things in their own timing mm -hmm. because guess what? If she was to leave, not if she come knock on your door, you gonna answer? No, right. <laughs> you're not right. gonna pull her in and say, "Girl, yes, come over here." I I don't like the way he was treating you. No, right. you are gonna close your door mainly because it's a pandemic, and secondly because you probably could care less what happens to her. That's it, and that's the sad part about it. We see things from a superficial level, but um. As far as her, I I commend her for even showing face. I I don't like the fact that he drug her into this mm -hmm. to make it to kind of like gloss over the fact of what he did. But I do want to ask you a question. Like, do you think for us women, I'm just going to speak for us women, when it comes to relationships or our marriages, do you think it's smarter to follow our heart or our head? Because they speak two different languages. Hi, 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 Grace. That's hard. <laughs> It is hard. It's hard. Because you especially know where your intuition have, comes from. Like yeah, yeah. Especially when you have um man, you being embedded in the word of God, it's different. Mm -hmm. Um because sometimes you may feel like your head is like, if you don't get your butt out this relationship right now, or get your butt out of this marriage with this person you know it's not the best for you it's, you know it's not going to yield the best results 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 i'm sorry for your life mm -hmm. um but sometimes your heart is saying you know god loves god loves us when we do wrong you know sometimes god loves us through the storm sometimes you have to love people through their storm in right. order to get to this big beautiful picture right. that sometimes you see in other relationships you don't never you never know what the things that they go through like um one of my favorite couples uh Deval and Kadeem mm -hmm. and I love their story because we look at them now and they're like relationship goals but nobody ever looks at their journey their struggle because they both talked about infidelity on both yeah ends infidelity they both talk about how they went through financial struggles mm -hmm. how he um lost you know his job in the nfl and she had to um she had to nurture him back 
nurturing his self uh self-existence his self right. his self-esteem his pride she had to nurture him back to life nobody talks about the journey of marriage they just want to they just want to look and see this big beautiful be picture there. all the time right. and it's not it's not like that it's not like that marriage is going to go through things it's not going to always go through infidelity but right. it could be something else you know what i mean so and my issue with heart in this situation because i know you said earlier just like we said about kirk franklin mm -hmm. Derek jackson is human yeah but the thing that kind of disconnected me from what he did was his response to it you're yes. speaking about yourself in third person yes. you're still promoting your book talking about his 50 percent off you you don't seem apologetic and not to us like yeah. i could care less that if you're apologetic to me but mm -hmm. for your behavior and how you treated and embarrassed your wife and these other women because yeah. i don't even think these other women were privy to the fact that he was even married Mm -hmm. he's still trying to gloss over the situation and that's the part that just I, I don't have respect for that I can have more respect for you if you came to us just like you came to us with, and talking all the bullshit that you were talking that you weren't living by come mm -hmm. to us in the same exact way as your audience and say look I was wrong I yeah. did wrong I should not have messed Stop up trying to appear politically correct yeah, that's what it is and just be like shit I'm wrong I am wrong I did wrong I messed up mm -hmm. I humil humiliated my wife and my family and I'm sorry and we are working on it as a family behind closed doors I'm asked you know my my wife has agreed to um you know uh forgive me Mm -hmm. um, I know she's not going to forget, but I, uh, she's agreed to forgive me and we're working on continuing and, and uh, in, improving our marriage. And I'm asking you guys as my fan base, as the people that listen to me to forgive me for my actions, you know, that would have been apologetic, something we could have worked with, but this politically i have done this and you know and i've done that and no sir no sugar over shit sir yes, yes. and you then using it. your wife as a pun in your scheme no <laughs> you better not come out with another book that's all i know <laughs> one of the books i think name is how to heal how to heal girl, girl. <laughs> look girl but i think as women we need to learn how to follow our intuition yeah it's okay to seek counsel from other people go to therapy yeah for yourself for yourself Couples counseling is really good but therapy for yourself i think it's hard I, I would imagine in couples counseling to really get out of get out all of your issues you know because you're having to share the you know your past experiences with your right, partner, you with your partner. And your partner may have past experiences that you may not understand so yes mm -hmm. individual counseling is definitely key because you get to learn and discover things about yourself. And then that aha moment may come, oh, this is why I do this in our relationship. And that's why you come together for couples counseling. Yep. And then um, I've also heard just from, from people, you know, in general that, you know, people ask, when do you know to leave? And people say, you will know, yeah. like you will keep having these thoughts in your head. Like I'm ready to go. I, I think it's, I think it's time to go. But that moment when that thought doesn't even come up, like, I think it's, I'm gone. That's when you know you're ready to leave. Like, don't let anybody dictate whether you, uh, what action you take in your relationships, whether it's a man or whether it's a woman. Mm -hmm. um, you do what your heart desires. If right. you want to stay and fix it, then you stay and fix it. If you want to go and move on, then you go and move on. Like but, said, um, that's your business. Right. My prayer is for, Denea to really um hmm, gain some clarity of herself through this um that somebody is affirming her that she has a really great support system mm -hmm. that's loving on her because right now that's what she needs um because she still has to save face for her family for kids her children. for children yeah. I don't even know how old their children are. I don't even know if they're privy to it. Mm -hmm. But that's just something that that's going to come up on their personal side. That's stuff we don't see. Yep. We don't yep. know how much she's cried. We don't know how how broken she may feel if she feels broken. She yep. comes across strong on her post, but 
we don't know internally what she's feeling. And right. that's the part that we do have to allow her grace because, and you know, a lot of people, it's funny when we see the memes and right. Right. But she's still a person and she still has feelings. And I'm sure yeah. this is devastating to her, especially okay. if she's such a woman of God, like she is because yeah. then now you have to fight with, am I going against God? Because mm-hmm. I may want to leave this relationship. Right. 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 So. Right. Yeah. Man, that that was a um hmm. That was a lot. It was a lot. It, it was, was a good, lot. Though. But but it was good. It was yeah. Yeah. Follow your intuition, ladies. Mm-hmm. Follow your heart. Do what you want to do because as we know with these world events, with people dying left and right, life is short. Mm-hmm. And I tell myself that all the time. Do you want to be happy? If you want to be happy, be happy. Do the things you want to do. If you want to eat that ice cream, eat that ice cream. But don't go cheating on people eating the ice cream. <laughs> like if you don't want to be with someone, I rather you say, "Look, I don't want to be with you. I want to live my life of happiness by myself." I think we need to learn how to normalize telling people how we feel. And I'm gonna say this one thing before we go, because I was listening, to, and this might be a whole other topic for another day. But I was listening to Shan Booty. I don't know if you know her. Mm-mm. She's an um, IG, like, I love her. She's um, like psych based. She talks about sexuality a lot. Mm-hmm. But she was saying that um, a lot of times people cheat because they don't know how to go to their partners and express even their desires about other people and their partners being able to like say, okay, well, why are you desiring it? And that's super hard. Like, mm-hmm. can I go to my husband and say, look, you're not giving me the attention that I want and somebody else just did and I don't know what to do with that. Yes, I can. How would he receive that? He would not receive it well because she said, you know, partners are, so you better not do this and you better not do that because if you do this, this is going to happen. And this is why a lot of people cheat because they they don't feel comfortable going to their partners and telling them about their desires. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Y'all looking at their feelings in general. Their feelings, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I do, I understand what she says about that. Not everybody can go to their partner because they have desires or feelings, or if they feel like their partner is not giving it and someone else is. Right. That's a hard conversation to have, but yeah. do we allow our partners that that freedom to come to us and mm-hmm. say these these are my desires or this is what I'm feeling, or some someone may be flirting with me too much and I kind of like it. Mm-hmm hmm yep I, I mean you you have to it's, it's man it, in this day and age you have to normalize those those conversations like we're not you know we're not in back in the day where we started everything on the rug and right. you know no we we not it's not like that it's not like that anymore you have to normalize those conversations in your and they are hard they are hard that's why we say that therapy counseling um, is a must, whether it's with your pastor, whether it's with a um, therapist, um, it's a must. Eat, not eat, not just when you're doing horrible, but well, normalize. Well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, normalize have needing guidance through life because there's not a book with your situations that's going to tell you about your journey but having someone to guide you through because even when you go to therapy or counseling they're not going to say this is what's going on this is what's happening this, right. they can't say that they can only guide you they can only um interpret interpret your situation them. yeah yeah and they can only navigate your situation yes. by what you're giving them so right. that's why it's always good to be honest with your therapist because mm-hmm. when, you're, when you bring out that honesty that's when the work actually starts starts yep that is that is so true man this was a good this this was needed like was slow clap to this podcast <laughs> slow <laughs> clap yes y'all so gonna know. do a girlfriend talk this week we're going to get back on track next week and do our girlfriend talk or giving you the game, but whatever. But I enjoyed you. I can't wait until we get into the content factory. I, no, I, I got to go see it very soon. I'm so, I'm so excited. I really want you to come see it. That it's girl. When I tell you, we will, we're going to sound amazing. You hear me? I'm excited. Y'all, thank y'all for sticking with us. We do apologize again for last week for kind of skipping a week. It was my fault. Blame LaDonna. That's Blame okay. Her. You know, sometimes <laughs> opportunities present themselves and you just yes. have to say, girl, go get it. 
Yes. And I have a, such a great partner and friend that was very supportive of my opportunity. So uh, with that being said, um, find us on find Instagram, yep. um, Two Dope Girls Podcast. If you guys have any questions, if you have any topics, or if you just want to hit us up for business opportunities, you can hit us up at ask two dope girls at gmail.com. It, did I get it right this time? You did, girl. You did. Yeah. And we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. You guys go look at our YouTube videos so you can see us interact with each other. We'll be back in person interacting with each other. And it's going to yep. be so much fun. So bomb. And you can find me at Grace Face with two underscores on IG. And you can find me at Naturally Pretty on IG. And until next time, you guys. Two dope girls. Ah. Bye. Dope girl, dope, dope, dope girl.